Ever find yourself glued to those aircraft carrier documentaries? Yeah. You know, those monster floating cities where jets launch off the deck crazy fast. I'm talking insanely fast. Always boggled my mind. So today, we're going all in for a deep dive into how aircraft carriers actually work. It's a world where you're really pushing the limits of what humans can do, working with some of the most cutting edge technology out there. For sure. It's like controlled chaos, but on a scale you wouldn't believe. Okay, picture this. You're on the deck, winds whipping past, jet engines are practically rattling your teeth, and the ocean's just sprawling out around you. And that's before things even get going. We're gonna break down how those jets get airborne, how they nail those insane landings, and uncover the essential role of the deck crew, the unsung heroes, keeping it all running. It really is this amazing combo of human guts and next level engineering. They just couldn't exist without each other in that environment. No kidding. So first up, let's talk takeoffs. I mean, we've all seen the movies, right? Jets just blasting off the deck like someone shot them from a cannon. Yeah, well, it's not movie magic. It's this crazy, ingenious catapult system. Imagine, like a giant slingshot. But instead of pebbles, it's launching multi-ton jets. Zero to 150 miles per hour in the blink of an eye, all within the space of a ship's deck. Hold on, 150 miles per hour in seconds. That's gotta be faster than my car. It has to be. Think about it launching a jet from a platform that's already moving, dealing with wind, the plane's weight, even the balance of the ship itself. Talk about precision. The launch officer, sometimes called the shooter, has to factor all that in to make sure the launch is smooth and controlled. It's like this wild mix of physics and perfect timing. You know, I never even considered how the ship's balance would play into something like that. It's a whole other level of, like, calculated risk with every single takeoff. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It really speaks to the skill and training of the pilots and the entire flight deck crew that these operations happen so flawlessly every single day. But you're right, those takeoffs, those are just the start. Landings. Now, those are in a whole other league of nerve-wracking. If takeoffs are that intense, I can't even imagine trying to land on a moving runway in the middle of the ocean. It'd be like trying to hit a bullseye while riding a roller coaster. A lot of people compare landing on a carrier deck to landing on a postage stamp. And it's a moving postage stamp at that. Pilots are approaching this tiny little strip of deck, pitching and rolling with the waves at speeds over 30 knots, and they have zero room for error. Okay, now my palms are actually getting sweaty just thinking about it. How do they even begin to approach something like that? Well, that's where the landing signal officer, the LSO, comes in. They're absolutely critical. Remember those folks in the bright yellow jackets standing right at the edge of the deck? Those are the ones, they're like the pilot's lifeline in those last few seconds before touchdown. Talk about a high pressure job. It's like they're practically waving those jets down with their bare hands. Haha. <laughs> well, not quite bare hands. The real unsung heroes of the landing are these things called arresting wires. They're a marvel of engineering, let me tell you. So the jet, it has this hook on the back, and during what we call a trap landing, it has to snag one of these cables that are stretched across the deck. Right, right, the trap landing. It's like a controlled crash landing. In a way, yeah. That cable, it acts like this giant rubber band absorbing the jet's energy and bringing it to a stop really, really quickly. That's insane. So we're talking like a roller coaster slamming on its brakes. Yes. What's that feel like for the pilot? Okay, try to imagine this. You're flying at over 100 miles per hour, aiming for this target that's actively moving away from you, yeah. and you're battling wind gusts and turbulent air the whole way down. It's basically like trying to thread a needle at 100 miles per hour. It takes nerves of steel, that's for sure. And what happens if, you know, they miss the needle, huh? if the hook doesn't catch? That, my friend, is what we call a bolter. Imagine all that, and then having to pull up and go around again because you didn't grab the wire. Now that's a heart-stopping moment, not just for the pilot, but for everyone on deck. Okay, so you've got these crazy skilled pilots pulling off these insane landings, but I know they're not doing it alone, right? There's a whole team down there on that deck yeah, making yeah. this happen. Oh, you're absolutely right. Pilots get a lot of the glory, no doubt, but it's the, the deck crew, those unsung heroes in those colorful shirts, they're really the backbone of how this whole thing works. And those colors, they're not just for show. Each color means something different. It's like a visual code for who does what. It's like an orchestra down there. But instead of instruments, it's fire-resistant gear and ear protection. And I mean, they're working just feet away from those roaring jet engines and spinning propellers. Talk about an intense work environment. You're telling me. One wrong step out there, and it could be a disaster. That's why the training they go through is so incredibly tough. Yeah, you hear stories about these crews 
and the level of focus and discipline is mind-blowing. It's almost superhuman how they block out all that chaos and just execute flawlessly. What kind of training are we even talking about here? Like boot camp on steroids? It's not even just physical strength, it's mental toughness. These guys and women, they work crazy hours, often in some pretty extreme weather, <laughs> knowing that even a small slip up could have massive consequences. They train for every possible scenario you can imagine, from fires on the deck to medical emergencies. Because out there, anything can happen and they gotta be ready. And they do it all with this incredible efficiency. It's like a well-oiled machine. Makes you realize that it's not just individual skill, it's how all those individual skills come together, right? Exactly. Every movement is planned out, every single signal is understood by everyone, every piece of equipment handled with such care. And remember, they're working with very, very tight margins for error. Any mistake could have a ripple effect on the whole operation. It's a real testament to their dedication and professionalism that they make it look so effortless. Okay, so we've covered the day shift, but what about when the sun goes down? We're talking about landing a jet on a moving runway in the dark. How do they even begin to pull that off? That's just next level crazy. You think daytime operations are intense. Nighttime is when things get really wild. Imagine trying to land on a runway that's moving in pitch black with just the dim lights of the carrier and the LSO's signals to guide you. Visibility is practically zero, makes communication and coordination even more important. The margin for error is just, it's tiny. It's mind boggling. Talk about trusting your gut and the skills of everyone on that flight deck. The pressure must be immense, not only on the pilots, but on the deck crews as well. Oh, without a doubt. The mental and physical demands of night operations are something else. It takes a special kind of person to handle that pressure, that constant awareness that the smallest mistake could be critical. And yet they do it night after night with this incredible level of skill and precision. It's a real testament to the dedication and expertise of every single person out there. All right. So we're back, ready to unpack this whole world of the deck crew. It's like they're operating on a whole other level down there. A whirlwind of activity and danger too. You mentioned those colored shirts. What's the deal with that? It's like a rainbow on the deck. Yeah, yeah, it's all about instant recognition. You know, in that kind of high pressure environment, it's like a visual shorthand, so everyone knows who does what right away. Right, right. So you've got your yellow shirts, they're like the directors guiding the aircraft, making sure everything runs smoothly. Then you've got the green shirts, they're the ones handling those catapults and arresting gear, the really critical stuff. And let's not forget the red shirts, they're responsible for ordnance. Basically, they make sure those jets are armed and ready to go. Wow, so each color, it's like a vital piece of this whole intricate dance. Exactly, it's like a carefully choreographed ballet, but instead of tutus, it's fire-resistant gear and ear protection. Uh-huh, yeah. No kidding, I mean, they're working just feet away from those roaring jet engines, spinning propellers. Mm. Talk about an intense office environment. Oh yeah, you're telling me, one wrong step out there, it could be disastrous. That's why the training they go through is so rigorous. They don't just learn the ropes, they live and breathe them. It's gotta be more than just like a crash course, right? Oh, absolutely. It's all about building that muscle memory, you know, so that even under that insane pressure, they react instinctively because they know that every single move could be the difference between, you know, a successful operation and a complete catastrophe. Makes sense. You hear stories about these crews and the level of focus and discipline is just incredible. Almost superhuman the way they can just tune out all that chaos and execute. What kind of training are we even talking about here? Is it like boot camp on steroids or something? It's not just physical strength either. It's mental resilience, you know? These men and women are working these crazy long hours, often in some really extreme weather conditions, and they know that even a small mistake could have huge consequences. So they train for every possible scenario, from fires on deck to, you know, medical emergencies, because out there anything can happen and they got to be ready for it. Wow, that's intense. And they do it all with this incredible efficiency. It really is like a perfectly oiled machine. Right. It makes you realize it's not just individual skill, it's about how all those individual skills come together to make this incredible high functioning team. You got it. It's all about that synchronization. Every movement is carefully planned and executed. Every signal, everyone understands it perfectly. Every piece of equipment is handled with this, like incredible care. And remember, we're talking about working with really, really tight tolerances here. Any error could ripple through the entire operation. It's really a testament to how dedicated and professional they are. They make it look easy. They make it look easy, right? Yeah. Which is crazy. Okay, so we've been talking about the day shift. 
What about when the sun goes down? I mean, we're talking about landing a jet on a moving runway in the dark. How do they even begin to pull that off? That's like a whole other level of crazy. You think daytime operations are intense? Nighttime, that's when things get really interesting. You know, it's one thing to hear about night ops, but to actually picture it, those crews working in almost complete darkness, the stakes even higher, it really makes you appreciate what they pull off. It really shows you what humans are capable of, this perfect storm of training, technology, and just raw courage all coming together. And to think, a lot of it comes down to teamwork. I mean, we talked about the pilots, the LSOs, the deck crews, everyone, but it's how they all work together seamlessly that makes this crazy complex operation even possible. Couldn't agree more. It's like a perfectly synchronized dance, except with thousands of moving parts, millions of pounds of machinery, you know, and lives on the line. Right. And the thing is, it's not just about individual skills either. It's about how those skills are all woven together. How each person has to trust that everyone else is going to do their part, even when things get hairy. Exactly. Especially when the pressure is on and the stakes are that high. Absolutely. It makes you realize those incredible feats of naval aviation we see. It's not just about cool jets and daring maneuvers. It's really a testament to human ingenuity, to collaboration, to this like unwavering dedication to pushing the limits of what's possible. Yeah, you said it. The sheer complexity of running a floating airfield, launching and recovering aircraft in all kinds of conditions, day and night, it's mind blowing. It really highlights the best of what we can accomplish when we work together. It really does. It also makes you wonder about the future of naval aviation, right? With drones and all this autonomous technology, mm -hmm. it's really changing things up. So will we still need this level of human skill, this human daring? in the years to come. That's the million dollar question, isn't it? I mean, will we start seeing unmanned aircraft landing on carriers just like that in the near future? And how will the role of the pilot change, the LSO, even the deck crews? How do they fit into all this new tech? It's a really fascinating time to be following these developments. Who knows what incredible breakthroughs are right around the corner. No kidding. It's something to keep an eye on for sure. Well, that about wraps up our deep dive into the incredible world of aircraft carrier operations. We've only just scratched the surface, but hopefully you're walking away with a little more knowledge, a little more appreciation for the people who make it all happen. And the technology. Don't forget about the incredible technology. Absolutely, the technology too. Yeah. Until next time. <laughs>